Hey guys, welcome back to another cheater, cheater, haha, <laughs> another Undirect X engine tutorial. In this video, we can finish off the shader that we were not able to finish off last time. So, let me close all of these down. So, in here, in output error, error message, you can have a sharp pointer, compile errors, compile errors. Our errors. I'm gonna set that to equal the sharp pointer of error message. Get buffer pointer. Uh, unsign long buffer size. And the buffer size, of course, is gonna be the error message. Get buffer size and we can have an off stream FL, which we're gonna basically you can create a file and we can uh, we can uh, create a file and in that in that file we can uh, tell it what was wrong with the shader so. That's what we're gonna do. So what you want to do, you want to open file, file to write. You can say f out, f out dot open, and we're gonna call it shader error txt. Right. And we're gonna write out the message in here or int i equals zero i is less than buffer size plus plus i I was gonna create an error here so Is it F out? Compile shader errors. I. Not one, I. We write it out and then we close the file. F out dot close. And release error message. Error message dot release. Error message equals zero. And we can display a message box to let us know that a file has been written. Error compiling shader. Check shader error.txt. For message, let's say shader file name mbk. Then return. So that's it for that. We now we go to set shader parameters for the shader texture, which is a simple one. We just gonna call device context ps set shader resources zero of course I keep doing that zero one and and texture. That's all I needed. The other one's a little bit more stuff going on because passing a lot of the we can pass in the buffer for it. So each result for each result so make sure you're in the shit shader parameters for world matrix, B matrix, subtraction matrix. D3, D11. Mapped. Sub resource. Mapped. Resource. Matrix buffer type pointer. Data PTR. 
unsign int buffer number. We're gonna transpose all matrices. Hopefully, I'm spelled it, I spelled it correctly. D3D x matrix transpose world matrix world matrix I spell correctly today <laughs> we can do the same thing for the view matrix And the same thing for projection. Now that we have that, I'm gonna lock buffer result those device context map and matrix buffer zero d three d eleven map right discard zero and percent mapped resource and of course if it failed result return false otherwise data ptr equals matrix buffer type mapped resource dot p data and we want to set the data ptr world matrix to equal the world matrix data pointer b matrix we call the b matrix data pointer Projection matrix for the projection matrix. Then we, un we want to un unlock buffer device context unmap and ma matrix buffer and zero. You want to set the buffer number to equal zero. And we have this as zero because for, so far we only have one buffer, but in the future, in case we want to have multiple buffers, probably we want to pass it in here as a parameter and set the second buffer to equal that. I don't know yet exactly, but for this one, first, I don't even think I even need this. Okay. Then, oh, hold on. Update values in the shader device context BS set constant buffers. We're going to set the zero, one, and um, matrix buffer. I don't think we need this. I uh, I think it's not used right now. I was thinking in case we have other buffers, then we want to set that, but I'm not sure what's the point. This is... I mean, if you have another shader, I mean, you have another buffer where that contains three matrices in there, and I guess it's okay. But, and so that means you probably want to pass in the buffer size in here. Number. So he knows what which one to pass it to. Anyways, I'm think I'm speaking out loud. Sorry. Anyways, there you go. This is it for this shader. Um, this is it for this shader. Let me compile it to see if it actually compiles correctly before I say it's completed. Okay. All right. So it's completed. Shader is completed. 
the other thing that I want to create, might as well create it now since you know it's still a little short on the video. Might as well start initializing it now. I did say that this shader is going to be overwritten. So we're going to create another shader class and call this texture shader. Shader, we can finish. Shader, virtual destructor, finish. If and def. Texture, shader, h, number define, texture, shader, h, number and if. Okay, so, as well. Anyways, we can create this texture shader. Make sure this one's protected. This one's initially when you want to do this in here, you don't really have to call virtual. It's not really needed unless you can derive from this texture shader, which I don't think we ever gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna copy the f constructor that we have for the shader, and we can pass it into this to this shader as well. That does not change. Huh. We got shader device H W D shader file name project function picture function. So don't worry about this. It's just something that I had. If you have a visual assist, then it will generate all the stuff for you, which is so much easier. Um, which I'm still kind of getting used to, you know. <laughs> which is sometimes <coughs> why it creates an extra parenthesis. Uh, so like I said, I'm still getting used to it. But anyway. Now we're going to have a private ID 3D11 sampler state pointer M sample state okay so we'll make sure text the constructor contains this destructor okay, so it doesn't need to have virtual as you're overriding this one but I'm not sure about destructor I'm gonna leave it in destructor actually make sure you initialize begin and shader because we can uh, override it and we'll initialize and make sure you get the sample state so if you go to this texture shader You want to make sure you um in a destructor make sure you want to make sure you release this sampler release and sampler equals zero I guess the same thing no no the same thing as setting as zero and I maybe I just like seeing it purple <laughs> okay anyway um Remove this, we don't need it. If. Sh Wait, hold on. I forgot to. Uh, I don't like. I don't like having initialized all the way here in the bottom. I thought I was initialized, that's why. Alright. So in here, delete this and say if. Sh shader initialize. Pass a device. No. This doesn't get initialized correctly. Make sure return false. Otherwise, the 311 sampler description, sampler description, script. I keep seeing the script. Nothing wrong with that, guys. H result. I'm gonna copy that real quick. Filter, which be D3D11. 
filter min mag mip linear address u equals d 3d11 texture address wrap address v same thing d3 address wrap <coughs> and address w same thing MIP LOD set that to zero F matrix description dot max and he's whatever you I know how to spell how to pronounce that set that to one comparison function D three D eleven comparison always Border color zero. Go. Why do I keep having that? The border color of one zero. Border color two equals zero. And that border color of three equals zero. The min load D equals zero and dot uh, max LOD equals D three D eleven float thirty two max <clears throat> and then we basically just wanna create a sample state result equals device Create sampler state, amp sampler description, and amp sampler state. And like always, it failed result return false, return true. Do that and in here if you want to say device context yes sets samplers zero and why do I keep doing that zero one samplers stay in make sure you call the begin for this one counts and and device context ps set samplers Zip. I did it again oops I did it again don't know why I just whatever and share yeah. there you go we have this texture shader it's going to be initialized for shaders that have texture in it. So there you go. Make sure it compiles before I say it's completed. Yes. Okay. So there you go. This is how I'm and the shader uh, tutorials. In the next tutorial, we can create a Bretrix buffer. And after that Bretrix buffer, we can create a texture. So texture should not be that long. Nice. Not as much as the shader, so it should be okay. No worries, Vertex Buffer. Me, hopefully, I could do that in one video, so I'll do my best. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and and if you can, you could thumbs up this video, tell the people about it, and like always, feedback is always appreciated. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll see you guys next time and I'll, uh, I'll continue on doing the vertex shader, the vertex buffer next, on the next tutorial. So signing out guys and I'll see you guys next time.